Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Muhammad, the Leather Cowboy from Premier Leather Crafters, right here showing you another video. And I thought it would be a prime opportunity. A customer hit me up on the website again. Uh, Facebook is, thank you guys, thank you guys for the support from Facebook to Instagram to Shopify. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can never thank you guys enough for that. But a customer reached out to me from the Midwest, out of Texas. And he asked me, he said, can I make Ranger belts? Of course. Ranger belts are one of my most favorite belts to make. In my earlier years, uh, I, that was one of my biggest things, man, was Ranger belts. I wanted everybody in the South to have a Ranger belt because I love those belts so much. Um, just to give you guys a quick history uh, on Ranger belts, which was made popular back in the 1800s by nobody else other than the Texas Rangers. So they were made um, actually to support um, the those who carried the new holsters or the new guns that was coming out, the new coats. And those coats were very heavy. Um, now, in those days, a regular belt was not a common thing. So the uh, they were basically all of the most of the cowboys was basically just toting their guns in their waistband, and so the Ranger belt came uh, came out. So basically, what it, it was a way not even to hold up the pants of the Ranger, it was something just to hold the gun itself up because the the actual gun was making the pants drag. Back in those times, all they had was suspenders. So suspenders and loose top belt, loose plop pants was not a great combination. You know, they were dropping the guns everywhere. They'll lose the gun on the ride. So they came up with this, the Ranger belt. So just to give you a quick history, which is and the thing about the Ranger belt, the Ranger belt is probably one of the only pieces that have a leather crafter that has withstood the, the time, the sands of time from the 1800s. That's a long time. And now my, even more modern crafters are using those as fashion belts. Now, the great part about the, the Ranger belt, it was originally designed for the horse rider and it was a way for them to buckle certain things or buckle saddlebags and things to the horse and it was it wouldn't pinch the horse hair or pinch the horse skin so you come with this ranger belt or this ranger or this uh winching type system to where the two pieces of leather would overflap and then you would buckle the billet and the buckle in the buckle strap over the top of those two pieces of leather. And that's what they used to buckle. So it wouldn't, when they tighten it down, it wouldn't pinch the horse. That's the original purpose of those particular style systems that the Rangers have made popular. Then when the Rangers took them, hey, the rest is history. But let's get off into this because a Ranger belt is not a common, or Ranger style is not a common type belt. So, um, now you can go and purchase the, the different uh, books that uh, most of the leather suppliers have. I know Tandy has a belt making book that goes into detail about how to make a Ranger belt. Uh, you can purchase that, and but there are no kits. There are no kits to a Ranger belt. Basically, even in the book that was made popular by Al Stallman. So, um, actually, I think I have one. This one here. Belts Galore by Al Stallman. Now, even in that book, it doesn't give you the kit to how to make the billets. So, what I'm going to do today for you, I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own Ranger Belt billet and Ranger Belt buckle strap. Everything else is pretty much easy. It pretty much is the same way as you would make any other belt, except there are no buckles and you don't punch any holes, size holes, onto the main part of the belt. It all comes onto 
the billet, which is the, the tip end where the, the you will punch the size holes in, and then the buckle strap end that actually holds the buckle itself. Now, traditionally, your Ranger belt is an inch and a half. So that would all stay the same. I've made some for customers that are actually wider. Um, policemen, uh, especially your patrol policemen, they like a wider belt because they have all of that stuff that they got to carry. They got to carry handcuffs, the little flashlight, the stun gun, the extra clip holster, and, and then on top of that, the gun itself. And then you got to put all of that stuff around that big old bulletproof vest. So they need something a little bit wider, which probably can go, you can go up to two inches. So I've made them up to two inches. Uh, a lot of your construction guys, utility guys, the ones who carry your 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 tools onto their waist butt belt, you know, you don't want to. Those guys need a wider or wider belt strap. So, but generally for fashion and for everyday use or whatever, you want to go with an inch and a half. And now the great part of it, the thing about this is your billet will taper down. As well as your buckle end, it would taper down to three quarters. So that's a pretty nice drop off from an inch and a half down to a three quarter buckle and billet. So when what I want to show you guys is how to make your own billet. You can have your own billet craft aid or template that will withstand the hands of time and you don't have to have to worry about buying them. Y'all know me by now. Cowboy likes to save y'all some money as well as maximize your profits. Now, and we're going to make this, we're going to go right back as usual. You guessed it, our good old cereal box. Now, I've done several videos already with this same cereal box and we still got a lot left to use. And we, I finally decided to use the opposite end of the flap, that side piece side piece on the cereal box. This is what we're going to use today and I'm going to make my billet template as well as my buckle strap template out of the same thing. They're the exact same. One is just longer than the other one because that's where the hole's going into and then the other one is about four inches shorter. Now that's going to hold your, your buckle on. So let's get off into this and I pretty much pre-prepped all of this so we can put time on the video. But I want you guys to see this. This is already done. Actually, let me post this back up. And I'm going to show you this way. And all what I've done, these, these marks here, I measured out an inch and a half as if it was my actual belt blank. And you can see from the inch and a half because we want our tapered end of the, of the billet to come all the way to the end of the buckle. Now, you don't have to do that. You can actually bring this in probably about a quarter inch and it will work just as well. And then you can round those. Now, to get these round this rounded shape here, guess what I use? I use my good old edge slicker. That's what I've done. So... Here's the thing, people. Once you get your inch and a half marked off, this part here, then you're going to take your ruler and put your center line down here, down the center. And then you can mark off your holes. This is what I've done here. This is my first hole, second hole, third hole, fourth hole, fifth hole. I, I only do five holes because in what I do, the true size is the middle hole. It doesn't matter who you're making your belts for, even if you're doing a Ranger belt. If uh, and men are easy, women are easy. If you have a conversion chart, I think I did a video about that a, a, a while back about how to measure women or get the actual inch size for women. But if a man is a size 36, you make your middle hole a 36. And then that way he can tighten it up to a 34 or he can let it out the other way to a 38. This is a great tool, um, just something to interject real quick. When you make that middle hole your true size, you're actually giving your customers time to, I mean, if they go up in weight, they still can have that same belt for a long time. It's very rare that somebody will blow up or eat that much 
two sizes within a certain period of time. That happens over time. Now, as the direct opposite of losing weight, a person can lose a lot of weight quicker than they can put on a lot of weight. But you still have two sizes to go before they would either A, have to come back and get another piece, or B, um, changing the billet if it was a Ranger belt. So, and that saves them money. They still can keep the original piece. And then all they have to do is just change out the billet because all we had to do, all I have to do then is go in and seam rip that off with a seam ripper and then replace the billet and they can go up to a bigger size or a smaller size. No problem. But now back to this. I took my edge slicker and after the last hole, I came back another two inches. That gives me, this is my two inch mark. And from that two inch mark, I came in and I, I put the edge slicker right there on the edge of that two inch mark. And actually I did it this way. Yep, I did it that way. Two inch mark and you guys can see that. And I just drew my curve up. Same thing to the opposite end, opposite side. I just took that and drew my line and made that curve up. So you have that nice tapered curve shape. And what I also done, I skipped a little space in between there because of how it was rounded like that. If I had a left this here, it would have cut my taper off short. So I would have had a little nubby end. So I came back just a little bit and I met, marked that up to the line there to give myself a little room. I want to give them a little room on that because I got to have some stitching room. And I drew my line again, moved that over. And did the exact same thing, drew that line again. And I also actually did the same with the end here, as you guys can see that. Did that, and then I slid it over and drew that. Now, once I get this done, I'm going to cut this out, cut this whole entire shape out, even cut my tapered end off. Because this simulates this edge here and this edge here, these two lines here, or that spacing between the two lines, that simulates my border on my actual belt itself. So this billet is going to lay right in between my two border marks on my belt. So now the thing with the Ranger belt and what I really, really love about the Ranger belt is this is the prime opportunity for you to tool the entire piece. You can tool the entire piece or you can stamp the entire piece. And then here is the greatest attribute or adornment that you can put on a Ranger belt is once you made up and match up your billet and your buckle strap in, you would in turn whatever that last print or stamp or carving that you did on the belt part back here, you have to then continue the artwork or the tooling work into the billet. So it all looks like it's one continuous flowing piece. Really makes a Ranger belt an awesome piece. Really does make an Angel Ranger belt awesome. And then, now, a lot of crafters out there, they'll go and they'll get some uh, beautiful type of buckle set um, some, some fashion set. You can do that if you choose. It just increases the value into your work, into your piece. Uh, you don't want to just do a regular old buckle or utility buckle. You can get them all day long. But that actual uh, fashion buckle or actual dress buckle would look really great on a Ranger belt. Now, you don't, um, you can actually do this in everyday wear, casual wear. It looks great. They look great with jeans. You can do a dress belt, ranger belt, or a dress uh, ranger belt. Looks absolutely beautiful. No tool in the work. It's all about the, uh, you can even actually add conchos to the dress belts, the dress ranger belts. Really throw it off. Not a lot of tooling work, but you can come back and put the conchos there or different stones in it. And then with a nice uh, a buckle on there, bu finished buckle on there, it really makes your work look great. You guys stay tuned. I will post some pictures after I get this thing done uh, into the, the, the comment section down there where you can look at it and see. Or I might just do one video that just shows a collection of different belts that I do. Just so you guys can have an idea that this stuff is actually being made 
Well, really, they, they don't last that long. Soon after I get them made, I'm shipping out the next day once the customer signs off on them. But uh, uh, I'll get some pictures. You can also check um, my Facebook page, Premier Leather Crafters um, LLC on Facebook. You can hit me up there. You can see a lot of the finished work there. You can also hit me up. Uh, on Instagram at Cowboy PLC for Premier Leather Crafters. That's Cowboy K A W B O I P L C on Instagram. I'm everywhere. I'm on Twitter as Premier Leather Crafters, the Cowboy. You can check out all that stuff. Even down below on the video, when you see the video, hit the like button, subscribe to it. And then every time that a, a video comes out, you guys you, you guys can see this. Y'all know by now I'm all about saving the money, maximizing the profit. And you can make a lot of stuff just with simple everyday material you have around your house. You don't have to go and spend a lot of money, but to make a lot of money. I'm knocking that myth down. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make a lot of money. You just got everything you need is right in between these two things right here. These two ears, everything you need is in there. And it's laying around your house for free. This is Robert, the Leather Cowboy Muhammad, Premier Leather Crafters. Hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions, Hit the comments down below or hit me up on Facebook, Premier Leather Crafters. Hit me up on Instagram, Cowboy PLC, on Twitter, Premier Leather Crafters. And I'll be more than happy to answer you guys' questions. I'm a big fan. I'll email you the pictures where you can trace them and cut them out yourself if it's getting a little hard. Peace, people.